Welcome to Back Issues, the weekly show where we delve into the catacombs of comic continuity. I am Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. And today we're talking about uh, Avengers Disassembled. This I thought we'd delve into Justice League of the Marvel Universe, the Avengers. You guys know the Avengers, right. uh, you've seen the movie, you've seen the movie, and so I thought, what better way to introduce you to the Avengers than to introduce their worst day when we completely destroy the team and get rid of this entire roster. Is it literally a day? It's one day. Okay. It is oh, the wow. worst day in Avengers history. Ah. Uh, this title, uh, Avengers Assembled, came out in the early 2000s, like 2002, 2003. Okay. Um, it was written by superstar Marvel architect Brian Michael Bendis, who... Uh, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He helped actually work on a, like the Iron Man movie and like the Avengers movie. and went, like He's a Marvel guy. He's an but, aficionado. Yeah, and back then, he uh, all he did was he, he wrote like independent books. Um, he wrote like the Spawn spin-off series Sam and Twitch, uh, he wrote his own self-titled book, Jinx, and he did uh, a book called Powers, which is like a noir detective book that they adapted into a pilot that no series wanted. <laughs> but now it's going to be the only show on the PlayStation channel. So like PlayStation's getting their own TV channel, okay. and, the, and pa- Powers is going to be their show. That's their flagship title. The show no TV studio wanted is going to be the <laughs> flagship title for the PlayStation channel. Wait, did Fox yeah, reject this show? Fox rejected the show. Well, then it actually might succeed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least it'll get a second season. Uh, <laughs> oh, Al. All right, so in 1996, Marvel Comics files for bankruptcy. Right. And Wait, Marvel's comics filed for bankruptcy? Oh, yeah. Marvel was so fucked by the economic collapse of comic books in general that Marvel couldn't sustain itself. So it actually filed Chapter 11. And uh, it was only when they brought in this like new hotshot corporate president named Bill Jemis that things started to turn around. It was him that contacted his friends over at Fox and had them pick up the rights to X-Men. It was him that called up his friends at Sony and they got Spider-Man. And he contacted a bunch of different people to like help reinvigorate the franchise. Uh, who the- had it? Who had those titles before? Marvel. They just owned them. Like, Marvel just had them. They just didn't know how to develop them into movies. Oh, okay. Except for Spider-Man. Spider-Man was owned by, like... I think it was Carloco, which is, like, Jim Cameron's uh, production company. But then it went out of business and was bought by another company. And it had been in legal entanglements for, like, decades. Mm-hmm. And then Jemis went, hey, how come there's no Spider-Man movie? And they're like, oh, it's a whole thing. Uh, Wizard Magazine wrote a whole big thing about it. And he's like, what the fuck is Wizard Magazine? <laughs> Have you tried using a lawyer? And so he fucking took care of that in like a year. <laughs> what Marvel couldn't do in 20. By the way, if you want to have a laugh, read James Cameron's Spider-Man script. It's some of the worst <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life. You just Google James Cameron's Spider-Man script. It comes, comes up, up, boom. It's like 300 pages. It's got four villains in oh it. Spider-Man calls people motherfuckers. He has sex with Mary <laughs> Jane. Uh, Wait, on... all this time I'm thinking, I feel like I'm flying, Peter, and it's just entirely different. Yeah, no. How he... did he call people motherfuckers? It, it wasn't your... going to be rated R, was it? You're allowed one fuck in oh. a PG-13 movie. So he called a person a motherfucker. Well, no, he called multiple people motherfuckers. Yeah, he said, "I'm gonna." Time. The Fuck line, the line in the script is, "I'm gonna kill all you motherfuckers." It sounds like Jay and yeah, James on the Bob's <laughs> right And back. all you motherfuckers are next. <laughs> yeah, that's Spider Man. James Cameron Spider Man. He also has sex with Mary Jane on top of I think it's the Twin Towers, wearing just his mask. Oh my god! It's the creepiest shit ever. That he has like a wet bizarre. dream where he discovers his web shooters. So he wakes up a little sticky. <laughs> I'm like, this is the. I'm like, what is this? No. We'll get into no that. What's that analogy? One day, one, we should do a back issues where you all, where we all read that script, and then we can just talk about how fucking terrible it is. <laughs> it's free, and it's so bad. But uh, let's that, not talk yeah. about Spider Man because Spider Man is kryptonite to the show. Right. But worse <laughs> than Spider Man, I've tur- as it turns out, is Firefly. Firefly Serenity. No one wants to see that shit. That episode yeah. of Sal says what? I think it's at seven right now. Seven views. Wow. Yeah. Really? No one gives a shit. And I can't even pitch it to the Firefly fans because I shit all over that. Book. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe well, that's why word got out. They're yeah, like, don't, no, watch don't watch Sal's it. show because he shits. You all know over they would it. because they'd be like, "Ooh, I want to, I, I want to." He's, he's not a brown coat. He's he not a brown. Coat. <laughs> Avengers Disassembled came about because Brian Michael Bendis helped write this whole thing. He was brought in by I think it was editor in chief at the time, Joe Casada, who was a friend of Bill Jim as he brought him in, and Casada's uh, like, "This young buck 
is going to fucking change everything. And indeed he did. And Bendis was really tight with dialogue, and he's really great with uh, with character moments. The thing he's not really great about is continuity. He's like, he, he cares about it, he's interested in it, mm-hmm. but if it gets in the way of his story, he's like, nah. nah. And he has the characters just very di- dismissively say things like, you know, oh, well, I don't remember. Not his own continuity, though. <laughs> no, he well, like he, you know, it's, it's the it's the it's the decades of continuity. Even his yeah. own continuity is kind of iffy, but most of the time he's neglecting shit that happened like fifty years ago. Okay, he's like, right. look, he has a character meet another character, and he doesn't know because he didn't do the research that those characters met in a book ten or fifteen years ago. Right. So he's writing their first meeting, yeah. and then like it turns out they met one time. Doesn't Marvel have people that look at that? You like, think they do, and I think they're called continuity directors. But right. for some reason, it like always an happens. Position that someone's well, paid. You know what's do. funny? You could probably just throw the book on a, a message board and say, "Hey, who wants to fucking proofread this book?" And people would do it for nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would leak the entire story yeah, beforehand, that's and you wouldn't make a whole lot of money. Yeah. But oh, I will say. Um, because the characters never really age. I mean, they go through stories. But, yeah, it's kind of hard. You know, fifty oh. years of history is just like, well, I'm the same character I was. Oh, well, instead of fifty years, they say it's like two years or five years. But that's bullshit. Well, yeah, but you <laughs> don't look too close. Is like goes at like a tenth the speed. That's right. Normal. Time. That's right. That's how they make it work. Because when DC has a crisis, mm-hmm. you know, they reset everything. Marvel's never had a crisis. <laughs> Captain America fucking fought in World War II, and he was woken up. Uh, by the Avengers, and that's how the Avengers were kind of formed. Uh, the Avengers were created by uh, Giant Man, or I'm sorry, Ant Man. Mm-hmm. G- the guy Hank Pym has been Ant Man and Giant Man and Goliath and Yellow Jacket. Like he's because been, he's fucking lame. Because he's a crazy asshole scientist right. douche. Because he, like anyway, let's not get into him just net, just yet. But but like civilization changes around them. Yes. Like, how do they account for that? They just remember it a little differently, uh-huh. or they go like, "That was a long time ago, you guys." That was like four years ago. They don't even say the number. They, I think that's where the editor comes in. And he goes yeah. like, oh, instead of paying, saying 30 years ago, let's say a long time ago or a while ago. So the continuity directors just kind of make everything more vague. Yes. So you can't really pin anything down. <laughs> the only thing they do is update the wars. Like Frank Castle was a uh, nom vet. Right. Now he's not. Uh, <laughs> but he was in Dead or Storm and then he was over in Iraq. Yep. Right. And for the people who are reading it, they, they're fine with it. We're all blissfully, right. willfully ignorant of the continuity discrepancies, as long so, as it gives us a cool. So how retarded is that? When you finally have Flash Thompson then come back, and he's talking war. about Iraq, and you're just like, but... Didn't you, Did you already didn't, come back, you already back from war? Yeah. the war? Yeah. And you're not that like, different? I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, what? Well, the, the, the convenient thing is that no one ever asks those questions, <laughs> because they're right. fictional, and we can just make them say whatever we want. Right. <laughs> and they right. can conveniently not ask questions that normal, rational people might. Would obviously ask, yeah. Like us. Yes. Yeah. Avengers is a funny book, and I, I, I want to get into the, the Avengers title first, because... When you think Avengers and you think of compliments, you think of like the Justice League, mm-hmm. and the Justice League is a title that has like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green right. Lantern, all the Flash. The, all like, the main the headliners, headliners yeah. are on the Justice League. It wasn't yeah. quite that Martian way. Martian Manhunter. Yeah, he's pretty. He is cool. <laughs> he's a Green Superman. So he. Uh, so you got the Justice League, and they're like the heavy hitters of the DC universe, and the Avengers are as we know them today, the heavy hitters of the Marvel Universe. Right. But the one thing that both those teams have in common, even though they're from two different companies, is that they both were demonstrably lame titles at one point or another, mm. and had incredibly depowered, lame characters supporting them. The Avengers, I always looked at that team as a Spider-Man fan, as a, a Batman fan. Like When I'm reading the individual characters and I look at the Avengers, the Avengers always struck me as the team full of characters who couldn't sell their own books. Mm-hmm. Like, I can see that. Hawkeye's on that team. Yeah. And don't forget Ant-Man. <laughs> and how about the Wasp or the Vision or Scarlet Witch? Aren't those such great characters? Yeah. They could all probably sell their own individual issues. No. no. That's why you put them all together and they all make one interesting character right. called the Avengers. But that now you've got... Around but now it's or Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but now you've got Hulk and Yeah, Iron now Man. you have those, but it wasn't always that way. Nice. It actually started out that way and then it got stupid and the character like the thing about the Avengers is that the roster always changes there's right. always a different team every couple of years they completely change the roster up the Justice League also used to be incredibly lame uh, when Superman died you probably remember the death of Superman at least in some cultural way yeah so Superman dies the 90s. part of the yeah part of the reason why Superman dies is because the Justice League was so shitty it couldn't <laughs> stop doomsday because the Justice League in 1996 was the Blue Beetle fire. Ice, 
Booster Gold, Bloodwind, and Guy Gardner. So I'm guessing they're not going to be in the movie. No, I don't think a single one of them will ever appear in a movie, ever. And yet, Marvel did put uh, Hawkeye Hawkeye in the Avengers. They took one of their lame characters and put it in the movie. They had the balls to do that. I would say Hawkeye's cooler than all of those characters combined. (laughs) Grant Morrison steps in and he goes, Why does the Justice League suck? (laughs) Why is it so shitty? These guys should be epic and awesome. Like Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and Aquaman. And they were like, and Aquaman? He's like, Aquaman's cool, watch. And he made it cool. Uh, and now Aquaman's super awesome. Anyway, let's not get into super and awesome. The beard. Yeah. He's super You're, bad. He's cute. Yeah. They always go back to the hook hand and the beard. Because he was, they changed that like one time in like the 90s. They made him like super edgy and cool. He got hand eaten by piranhas or some shit. And then he got a hook hand instead. And he's like, ooh. And you're like, so? Stop it, Aquaman. Just <laughs> knock it off. You'd be better with two hands. He's like, nope, this is my thing now. Yeah. I have and then a hook. It, so Avengers Disassembled comes right. about because, like the Justice League before it, the Avengers had become stale and lame and no one gave a shit. Mm-hmm. So who was on the Avengers at that point? At this point, everyone on the cover is in the Avengers. Now, they tried to start to fix things by putting Captain America on the team, right. Iron Man's on the team. But you have to remember, when this came out, Iron Man was not an awesome character. Mm. No one gave a crap about Iron Man. Right. At least as much as they do now. Like, Iron Man was not a top-tier character. He was an Avenger. I do remember this. Yeah. Because I remember, not necessarily the gray suit, but when he was coming out with, like, the red and gold suit and everyone's like, Iron Man... Who the fuck does cares about him? He's just wearing a suit. He doesn't have like actual. Yeah, he powers. doesn't have any powers. No, he's just a dude. Batman in a suit. doesn't have powers, right? But why but is Batman's he so cool? Also. But Batman is also Batman's like Batman's not a drunk. <laughs> we got Yellow Jacket, aka Goliath, aka Giant Man, aka Ant Man. That's this, guy, That's this guy, Hank yeah, okay. Pym, Iron Man. Because he is his mask looks a lot like Captain America's. Well, yeah, blue. Yeah. They're very similar. It's but confusing. he's got like ears that go up. Yeah, yeah. those are antenna that control instead of wings. Yes. Yeah, and he doesn't have a giant A. Yeah. Even though he should have an A because he's Ant Man. But then I think they'd be totally and an Avenger. And an Avenger, yeah. Uh, you got Scarlet Witch, you got Hawkeye, She Hulk, Captain Britain, Captain America. Captain Britain? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the super soldier, super soldier uh, version for, for Britain that was oh, Captain America for you. Captain America. They made a ton of different. But from Captain. England. There was like Captain Italy and Captain France. <laughs> there were no other characters like that. This is not the regular Captain Britain. Maybe it's Ultimate <laughs> Avengers, I'm thinking. This isn't yeah, even the regular Captain I'm Britain? Like, all right, no. Ultimate Avengers, there are other captains, because I just think I remember them like sharing. Oh, well, this is not the shit. Ultimate... All right, it's not, but I, re- uh, okay. I just remember there. All right, well, I didn't read that, so I don't know what you're talking about. For continuity's sake, I'll let you know, Iron Man at this point is the Secretary of Defense. Okay, that's weird. And an Avenger? And an Avenger. And Iron Man. And everybody knows that Tony Stark's Iron Man, because there used to be a time when people mm-hmm. didn't know. They didn't know. And, uh, and uh, the Avengers operated out of Avengers Mansion, which was just in the middle of Midtown. There was like a place near the park, I guess, mm-hmm. where they had this big uh, mansion. And uh, so they're hanging out, and... Did they buy the mansion, or did the government give them the mansion? I think I, it's Tony's. I think Stark owns oh, the mansion. Oh, that makes sense. In fact, he does. Stark owns the mansion. Okay. And he finances the Avengers, because he's such a billionaire, he nice. can afford to like pay their... He can pay for not only his own suits, but for everybody's... Well, he can pay for, like, their rent and food and, like, for the water bill and stuff. Right. Well, it seems like it would either just be from the government or, you know, he has enough money. Yeah, and at this point, the government also supports the Avengers as well. Like, the government... Like, the the Avengers are kind of, like, almost like an offshoot of the government. Right. They're like an agency. Yeah. So the Avengers uh, are hanging out. They're actually talking about Who'd You Rather. I think they're having a game of Who'd You Rather. (laughs) And okay. a former Avenger who had just died named Jack of Hearts, who I will not get into right now. Okay. He sucks, and he was killed, and rightfully so. <laughs> Jack of Hearts shows up, and he died a few months prior to this title. Okay. And so his zombified corpse shambles up to the mansion. Now, Jack of Hearts died saving Ant-Man's daughter. Now, not Ant-Man we were just talking about, the other Ant-Man. There's two Ant-Mans. There's one Ant-Man that's Hank Pym. He invented Pym particles. He can get himself small and big. Right, and he can the real Ant-Man. That's the real Ant-Man. He can also yeah. make himself big and call himself Giant Man. At this point, he's Yellow Jacket. Okay. Ant-Man, Scott Lang, is just a regular dude who has a helmet and he can, like, talk to ants. I think he can also shrink, but it doesn't matter. So Ant-Man's daughter is rescued by Jack of Hearts, but in the process, Jack of Hearts dies. Jack of Hearts shows up at the mansion door, zombified and gross. Scott Lang, a.k.a. Ant-Man at this point, uh, runs over to him and he's like, I saw you die, what happened? 
And then he says, I'm sorry, and explodes. Blows up the mansion and kills Scott Lang. Oh, fuck. Wow. So you've you've just killed, you've re-killed Jack of Hearts, and you've killed Scott Lang. This is like the beginning of the book? This is the beginning, this is how the book opens. Ryan Michael Bendis knows how to start a wow. story. So he's like, Ding dong, want, who's two the door? Is too confusing. Death. Yep, one, one Ant-Man's Ant gone. gone. We got one Ant-Man again. That's right. Scott Lang dies, and right at that moment, uh, Tony Stark is giving a speech at the UN, and he suddenly becomes completely shit-faced. He all of a sudden is drunk, and everyone believes that he must have drank a whole bunch before right. having this speech, and then just lost it. And he's like, I didn't have anything to drink. I, I mean, that's I was drunk, yeah. but yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah. maybe you had a blackout. And he's like, no! <laughs> I put that shit behind me a long time ago! And they're like, yeah, but... Yeah, but you fell off the wagon. The government immediately fires him from being Secretary of Defense. Wait, uh, did he drink? Well, we'll uh, get there. You don't so, know. Avengers Mansion blows up at the same time. Uh, and this is when Vision shows up. Now, Vision is an android, but he was a sentient android, like Data. He was created by an android called Ultron. Ultron was created by Hank Pym, a.k.a. Yellowjacket, who is still alive. Right. Ultron created Vision as like his vision of what humanity will look like when he gets through with it. And then Vision ultimately goes against its programming and saves the Avengers and becomes one. Mm. Okay, so... Vision was evil. Yes. And then became good. That's right. All right. I always, yeah. I always remembered him being good. Yeah. So Vision shows up, and he's like, Hey, everybody, uh, I got the code white alert that Avengers Mansion's under attack. Someone reprogrammed Vision so that once the code white alert was announced, Vision would launch three Ultron robots out of his body and then self-destruct. And then the Avengers, who are now in the midst of a explosion and the death of two comrades have to fight these Ultrons. Now Ultron which you will find out in Avengers 2 is one hard ass robot motherfucker. It's basically like the Terminator if it also had an adamantium hull and ran on a nuclear battery. Right. So like one is, is really, really hard bad. but yeah. three is impossible. Okay. At the same time She-Hulk who is Bruce Banner's cousin who needed a blood transfusion or else she would die Bruce Banner gives her his blood, she hulks out, but because it's a blood transfusion, instead of being a bombardment of gamma rays, she can hulk out and then maintain her sanity. So she's right. just... She doesn't become like an animal. No, she's there. just super she's strong and hot. hot. She's also a Is she lawyer. as strong as Hulk? No. Okay. So anyway, uh, she hulk, inexplicably, and unrelated to anything she's ever done before, loses her shit. And she hulks out even more, she gets bigger, and she loses more of her consciousness, and then she picks up the deactivated body of Vision and rips it in half. So Vision's off the table. So now we've wow. lost Jack of Hearts, uh, well, Ant-Man, he Vision. Vision turned off, but like Tony Stark, Reed Richards, uh, Hank Pym, you got enough super geniuses that they could probably turn, turn him back, back on. on. Right. But She-Hulk has, has destroyed him. So now Vision's off the table. In the ensuing explosion, the Wasp, who it was... Yellow Jacket's wife mm -hmm. and a founding member of the Avengers uh, was caught in the explosion and she's unconscious. Oh. Yellow Jacket, who is still in love with her, picks her up, takes her to the hospital, pieces out of the fight. He's like, Janet's hurt, I gotta go. So he takes her to the hospital and then stays with her for the rest of the fight. Uh -huh. While they're still fighting Ultrons. While they're still fighting Ultrons. So he's big on this book, but he's really not. But he was an Avenger. He was part. He was. Right. He was taken off the list. Then Captain America shows up, and Iron Man show up, and they help save the day. They quell the robot problem, and all the superheroes in the surrounding areas show up because they're like, we heard that some major heavy shit happened. Right. Nick Fury shows up. Shield shows up, and they're like, this is a crime scene. We have to investigate it. Everyone, get the fuck out of here. And right at that moment, the Kree invade. Now the Kree are an alien race that are at war with the Skrulls. Uh, you might have seen a Kree in a recent episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. Super cool. Maybe. You will definitely see Kree in Guardians of the Galaxy. The Kree are kind of like, you know, the whole... The pyramids were built by aliens. The Kree came here along with the Celestials and the Eternals, and they helped create different pockets of superhumanity. Okay. But right. suddenly the Kree have attacked, okay. and they're laying siege to Manhattan. 
Oh, wow. Incidentally, I should mention, when Vision shows up, he was flying a Quinjet, and he flew the Quinjet into the mansion. Okay. All of this is not a coincidence. Right, someone set this up. Someone set up the worst day in Avengers history right. and sought to take the Avengers off the playing field. And right. it's the Kree? No, the Kree are the just Kree are pawns. Just they, yeah. The Kree up here, Hawkeye shows up, and he's got his like explosive arrows and shit, right. and he's laying siege to some Kree, but then his backpack full of arrows catches fire. And he knows he, he can't get it off in time. So he grabs a Kree, he launches its jetpack, and he and the Kree launch into a Kree ship and blow the fuck up. Hawkeye's dead off the table. What? Uh, what, he can't get him off his back? It actually spawned the famous not like this quote. People made fun of Bendis and this book forever because when he notices that the backpack's on fire, he goes, not like this, not like this. And then he grabs the Kree and goes, like this, yeah, and then <laughs> blows the fuck up because he's super badass and cool. Right. Hawkeye is not to be seen again for a long well, he time. he blew up. Because he blew the fuck up. He's dead. Hawkeye's gone. I say that because I think everyone who died in this book is back. Right. But ten years later. Okay. So they kept this going for a long time. So, so that's three people dead. So that's... Yeah, three people Jack dead, four people re-dead. Right. So Doctor Strange shows up and he's like, You fucked up everything! <laughs> and they're like, Why? <laughs> And the reason why he's like that is because he says, uh, I showed up because there's all this magic shit going on. Yeah, what and they're are you like, doing? What magic person is in charge? And they're like, oh shit, the Scarlet Witch. Because the Scarlet Witch is a mutant who was born with the mutant ability to manipulate magic. Right. And they realize that Scarlet Witch is the reason why everything's going on. The Scarlet Witch is the... I brother. thought she was an Avenger. She is an Avenger. Isn't she here? She's here. Now... Here's what happened. Scarlet Witch, sister of Quicksilver, right. whom you will see in the new Avengers movie. Right. Right. Daughter of Magneto. Magneto, yes. Right. They used to be part of uh, the evil, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants created by Magneto. Mm -hmm. uh, the Avengers brought them in, and they became Avengers. Scarlet Witch married the Vision. Okay. And they had two children. Wait, how does a... And How does a have robot children. have children with a human person? Magic. They didn't explain it until now. She magicked them into existence. And what happened was they realized after a while that, like, these aren't real people. They're not even anything. They're just right. magic. You will them into existence because you want to be a mother so badly. Okay. So they unmagicked them into nothing. Who did? Agatha Harkness, who's a uh, <laughs> magic woman. She's like a... With the first name like Agatha. Yeah. yeah she has. She's like You've a... You've got she, gray hair and yeah. a cat. She actually helped mentor Scarlet Witch and helped her develop her magic oh. control. And she along with a few other people helped put that genie back in the bottle. And they kind of mind wiped her so she wouldn't remember that she had them. Scarlet Witch? Yeah. Oh. This was before this book. Yes. Okay. Yeah, way before. Okay. So, uh... Then they show a flashback. Poolside, Wasp and Scarlet Witch are hanging out, and Wasp's talking about how she missed her period. And she really hopes that she's not pregnant because superheroes shouldn't have kids. And she accidentally says, and you thought you could have two? And Scarlet Witch is like, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, I gotta go. So she leaves, oh, and Scarlet no. Witch is like, uh, Agatha, why do people think I have two children? And she's like, oh, um, uh, uh. And then she <laughs> kills Agatha and leaves her body decomposing in a chair. What? And then seeks out to bring her children back from nothing, and when Scarlet Witch realizes that she had children, her mind kind of just goes. Okay. So she's not really thinking clearly, and she just knows that the Avengers are going to try and stop her from having these oh, children. Yeah. So she... Because they're such goody two-shoes. Yeah. About reality. Even though they're her best friends, and they saved her from a life of like terrorism from her father, she betrays them and kills four of them. Right. She also publicly humiliates Tony Stark by... Right putting alcohol by in his system him, by changing reality. Because right. she has reality-altering magic powers. Right. And she has control over what they call chaos magic. Doctor Strange shows up and he's like, uh, there's no such thing as chaos magic. There's just being chaotic with magic. That's what she is. That's not a superpower. That's being real responsible with magic. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that, so, is I was that gonna say, just saying, like, chaos magic's bullshit? Yes. And I'm going to call it out right here in yep, the book. that's exactly what he does. Because <laughs> I was going to say, like, chaos magic is, like, the opposite of what Doctor Strange can do. Yeah. He has, like, rules and, like, learn spells right. and things. And yeah. she's just like, nah. That's right. Yeah. That's he's right. He's like, no, I'm just not a dick. Yep. <laughs> and he's also like, I earned my magic by having years of study and right. sacrifice. And you have a mutant ability that just lets you have magic? That's bullshit. Because you don't know how it works. Right. And you don't know the, the cost and the price of magic or how mm -hmm. to use it properly. Mm -hmm. So That's actually really smart for Bendis to do. Yes. And so she 
conjures more shit to help fight the Avengers. Uh, ultimately, Doctor Strange puts the magic whammy on her and knocks her right the fuck out. And Magneto shows up and he's like, I fucked up. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm going to take my kid and I'm going to go. What? No! <laughs> yeah, and they're like, no! And he's like, stop me. And then he leaves. Because he's, ma- he's a Magneto. And he's like, well, oh, like, Captain America, him, that's right? a nice shield. Kill with shield. Oh, Iron Man, you're in a big metal suit. Crush with suit. Uh, <laughs> anybody else have metal on them? Oh, everyone? Oh, and there's a helicarrier in the sky? Crush everyone with helicarrier. He's like super powerful. So he's right. like, I'm going to take my kid and go. And also they're kind of like, what are we going to do with her? Oh, Magneto's here to take her. Sweet. But she could still mess with reality. Well, like, is he, how, what's she, he going to do? She's well, magic. here's the thing. At this point in X-Men continuity... Charles Xavier quits the X-Men, Magneto quits being a dick. The two of them become close friends again, and they peace out to a place called Genosha. Genosha was an island sovereign country Mm. for mutants, and somebody blew it up and killed everyone there. So all the millions of mutants that lived there were annihilated in this one genocidal act. So Magneto and Professor X live in that ruined city, Oh. Wait, this wasn't the Scarlet Witch who killed all those people. No, Scarlet Witch didn't kill all those mutants. She just killed the Avengers. Oh, okay. I thought it was just like, and someone killed them all, and Magneto oh, yeah. was like, I know who the Ooh. fuck this was. I don't know who killed Genosha, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was a government, and I'm pretty sure it was humans. Okay. That's all I know, because I don't really read X-Men, but I know enough about it to kind of follow the plot. Right, okay. So, Magneto takes Scarlet Witch to Genosha. We assume to get the aid of Charles Xavier and help repair her mind using oh, his mental okay. abilities. Uh, the way you repair her mind is with an ice pick. That's what a lot of people said when they did the sequel to this called House of M, which I would love to do with you guys. Or we can just talk about it now, but House of M was like the sequel to this. The Avengers more or less are destroyed. The remaining Avengers all show up at Avengers Mansion to have like a conversation. and they all Because that's what Ben is. Ben is like, oh, what should I do next? I think I should have all these characters who can shoot fire from their eyes and fly and destroy the world and have a conversation. So they do. And they basically talk about how they really did some good and they were really effective. And the other lame characters from the Avengers who didn't die, quit. So, like, Falcon is like, I'm not gonna be the Falcon anymore. Well, bye! He leaves. Uh, Ms. Marvel is like, I don't know if I want to be an Avenger anymore. Later, Captain Britain, she's like, well, this was fun, but I'm going back to England. Alonzi! People started dying, yeah. and now I'm not as interested in it anymore. Exactly. And Tony Stark is like, I got fired from the government, and my stock went down a hundred fucking percent. Right. I can't afford to finance the Avengers, and I can barely afford to save my company. So, not only am I quitting the Avengers, but I can't pay you to be Avengers anymore. Right. So as far as I'm concerned on the books, there is no more Avengers. Bye. Mm-hmm. And then Captain America's like, oh. <laughs> All my friends. <laughs> yeah. I woke up from an iceberg and now they're gone. <laughs> well, a lot Again. happened between that time, but yes. <laughs> but this is all just a ploy for Bendis to do to the Avengers what Grant Morrison did to the Justice League. Because Bendis went to Marvel and he said, why are the Avengers so lame? Why aren't the Avengers all the cool characters? Why isn't Wolverine an Avenger? Why isn't Spider-Man an Avenger? Why aren't the main characters who sell thousands of books on the Avengers? And they're like, well, Wolverine is an X-Man, and Spider-Man's a loner. And he goes, so? And they're like, well, but we've always done it this way. He goes, well, that's worked out dynamite for you, huh? <laughs> so then Bendis creates the new Avengers out of the ashes of Avengers Disassembled. Two things came out of this book. One was the Young Avengers, and, one, and the other one was the New Avengers. Uh. The only thing that happens in this book is the Avengers are destroyed, and you're kind of left with this feeling of, what's going to happen next? And then this is the springboard for every Marvel event from here for ten years. Everything that happens in here starts the whole thread of continuity that runs till, like, now. So, hey, do you remember when the Avengers got shit on? Yeah. Now, today, in 2014... Literally 11 years later, I think. It was a long fucking time ago. The Avengers more or less look like this. Oh, Uh, no, 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 10 years ago. A long time ago. A long time, exactly. (laughs) I'm looking through the end of this book. This is really cool. They're showing, like, moments from other, like, books, I guess. Well, what they did was they... They're kind of like... The, all the surviving Avengers get together and they're like, what was our favorite, what was, your, what was our best moment? Okay. And each Avenger remembers a different moment. And they got a different artist to depict a image from that moment. Okay, it's not mm. it's not that they're taking stuff from like their old books. 
Well, no, no, no. They're not. They're not reprinting stuff that happened in the sixties. Right. They're, okay, yeah. they're just reimagining stuff. Okay, cool. I mean, this the image of the Avengers similar. is what exactly how they looked in the sixties. Right. I'm just saying, like, that wasn't pulled from a different. No, book. no. These it's are all like, like reimaginings. Oh, that's of, that's, right. that's, that's much, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. The guy who drew it uh, for the most part was David Finch. He drew it for the most part, but then they brought a bunch of superstar artists to kind of like do these double page splashes. I didn't interview him, but Tiffany did, and the interview is really killer. And he's really like a modest, cool guy. Just loves art, loves drawing cool shit. He wrote a Batman book for a little while, and Bendis wrote pretty much every Avengers book until like two years ago. Um, and in Age of Ultron, that's names. That's a cool name, and we're gonna use Ultron. That's our title. Well, we have access to Marvel. Everything Marvel does, so yeah. Yoink. Yeah. And even yep. though it'll confuse the shit out of people when they come here to buy it, uh, it'll be cool because they'll buy it. Uh, Age of Ultron is... Oh my god, that's a fantastic ploy. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, ma- I'm gonna name this awesome movie after this shitty book. Yeah. Wait, was yeah. it shitty? It was really stupid. Okay. It was Everyone really it. stupid. Age of Ultron is Ultron destroys humanity. And the surviving superheroes are like, everything's fucked. And then they send Wolverine back in time. So, uh, when mm. he destroys humanity. Yeah. Is that like when Superboy punches Reed? No! <laughs> it's like it's like he kills a thing in a person and no, he no, kills no. it so bad he actually, that no, it ripples through and all people. Individual people. Superboy in the Paradise Dimension who punches through reality is stupid. Ultron laying waste to cities and killing people by shooting them with lasers is killing that's humanity. Just, that's just what he oh, does. Oh, okay. I, just, no, I don't mean I like... I thought it was like a single act. Like, no, he killed humanity. No. Like he killed humanity by, no, by crushing a bug. No, yeah. yeah, he had to make more <laughs> Ultrons and they had to fly around and kill people there individually. Was, there was one yeah. innocent child and he stepped on it. Right, yeah, and that yeah, killed humanity. Know. So <laughs> humanity was gone. Space time. No. Yeah. He literally murdered every human being on the planet. That didn't have superpowers. Right. Uh, so anyway, Wolverine goes back in time. What about the people that did have? Superpowers? Now wait a minute. Doesn't Wolverine go back in time in the new yeah, Marvel movie? Does. The new X Men movie? movie. Yeah. So did they rip that idea off from? No. Age of Ultron. The or new, did Age the of new Ultron X-Men, rip that off from something else. The new X Men movie, <laughs> Days of Future Past, is just kind of like the comic of the same name, okay. where Sentinels destroyed everything. Right. But they send Kitty Pride back in time. In the upcoming movie, Days of Future Past. Wolverine goes back in time, and that's the story we're following, because Wolverine sells fucking movie tickets. <laughs> so it's just, it seems that. kind of coincidental to me that in Age of Ultron, they also send Wolverine back. Yes. Is that because Wolverine also sells more comics? He certainly does. <laughs> Wolverine well, just prints money. Right. Yeah, and so, he can regenerate, and he's right. also a murderer. He's got a and metal his, skeleton. His plan is he's going to go back, and not, he's not going to like stop Ultron from taking over the world. He's going to go back and find Hank Pym when he has the idea for Ultron and then put his claws through his face. <laughs> and indeed he does, and then returns to the present to find that things are even worse than they were <laughs> when uh, the Ultron Oops. people killed everything. Oh, the folly of time travel. So then Wolverine and Wolverine go back in time. <laughs> Avengers Assembled by Brian Michael Bendis and David Finch from Marvel Comics. Uh, if you don't like comics... I'd say pick it up anyway because yeah, it's kind it of worth awesome. reading. It's the art is sh- super cool. The writing is on point. Just when you start, it might to... be confusing as shit though. Well, because they do introduce all these characters yes. from everywhere. But you know what's funny? In the middle of story, then they kill them. So yeah. who cares? <laughs> it's a really awesome conflict. I gotta say. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the stu- they do a good job of kind of just showing you them. Like Hercules shows up, but they don't bother to explain who Hercules is or why right. he's there because who gives a shit? Right. He's only there to fight some Kree for a second. And were there really Kree? Who knows? Or were they just conjurings by Scarlet Witch? Like, that's the idea, is that Scarlet Witch can Wait, they don't explain? Manip- oh, they don't know. If They don't know how much Scarlet Witch changed or manipulated. Oh. Like, they don't know if apparently she made the Kree so, or if she just brought the Kree. Yeah. Did they kill all the Kree? Like, did those did Kree, Kree die? Go away? Or did they just disappear? We don't know. Well, what happened? Can't she just bring them back or? then, too? Like, everyone that dies, just like, ah, eh, you're fine. That's what yeah. they say to Doctor Strange, and he says, that's not how magic works. Bleh. Fuck you, Doctor Strange. <laughs> she has the that's ability to snap her The funny thing is, that's exactly how magic works, because that's exactly how Hawkeye comes back to life. Yeah, um, right. But it doesn't it matter. It have to be. Yeah. Because he blew up in a ship. He blew up in a ship that didn't exist. So where did he go? There's shit in here that he doesn't get to until 2007. Like, that he, he lays the groundwork for shit that happens in, like, four years later. That's impressive. Like, because the next thing that happens after this is the Civil War, where Iron Man and right. Captain America fight. Right. And everything changes and Captain America dies. And, like, he still hasn't done the thing that he put shit in for this. <laughs> Do you think he's got up on his wall, like, all this, like, you know, event timeline and I stuff? bet he does, because there was an issue of Avengers where they go to the future. Mm-hmm. And... 
the Tony Stark who's in that future has a chalkboard with the timeline that he remembers, like for when when things went wrong to where he is now, mm-hmm. and he put little Easter eggs in there of what he was going to do later. Really? Yeah, that's cool. It was really cool, and it was that's a double smart. page opener where it was uh-huh. like from here to here, and you're like, oh. That's awesome. And he even talked to other writers who were going to do shit and like had them put the name of their event in the timeline. Oh, wow. Yeah. But if you want, one of these days, you know what we could do? We could probably do a whole episode where we just recap what happens from here to now, and it would probably go as fast as any regular episode. Mm -hmm. Like, where I could go from, like, Civil War to Secret Invasion to Siege to Fear Itself, like, just completely wrap it all up. Just go, like, hey, if you want to read Marvel, here's what happened! (laughs) It's like, and then Hulk shows up, and who cares? And th- like, and that just uh, saves you a whole two years worth of stories. Right. Thoughts? I uh, really like this end where they're toasting everyone. These are all characters who are dead. Yeah, and it's fantastic, except for, except for the Scarlet Witch. I mean, they toast her because they say Wanda, but she's the last one that's mentioned. They're all like holding up glasses, and then uh, Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers, who is Miss Marvel? She is Miss Marvel. At that point, she's Warbird. <laughs> she holds up and just like. And everyone's naming off characters. And she's like, how about to all of us? Wanda too. And then no one says anything and they drink. And I get that feeling. It's like that. Well, she had just... I a, guess. A few yeah. pages prior, she had said, fuck Wanda. I will never forgive her for what she did to us. Mm-hmm. And they were like, she'd forgive you. She's like, no, she would. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if she would. Right. I will never forgive her. And then at the end, she's like, all right. Right. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I know I said this like three minutes Three ago, seconds ago, yeah, but yeah. yeah. All right, fine. Looks great. Thanks. I might read that one. That, I would, that, is the, that is the first one where I'm like, I think I might actually read that. Awesome. We've got, <laughs> we might have a convert. Who yeah. knows? Because, yeah. yeah, I could bring you up to speed. I got everything after this. Right. So, like, you could, if you care. And then, like, mm-hmm. when, you know what? There'll be a point where you go, I got to get off this ride. <laughs> yeah, it might be shortly after this one. <laughs> I have a feeling it might be this and the other one. Because, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. gets silly. But New Avengers is pretty sweet. And, it, and Bendis is at the helm, so it stays pretty grounded. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. And don't forget to stop by FunnyRama.com to check out this great comic book retailer and swing by LittleHouseOnline.com to find out more stuff that we do. Uh, yeah, so, so long. See ya. Uh... In my book, there's going to be one hit man. Yep. I'm going to fix it right in the beginning. <laughs> Boom. Like murdering in the one yeah. Done. All right. Done. Who's next? the shitty one. So who's next? Because right now, I think you can all admit, Ant-Man's lame. Yeah. So talking moving to hit. ants is the worst power. And, and controlling ever. ants? It's yeah. Even worse than talking to fish. Wait, yeah. is it controlling ants or it is can, it just like telling them, hey, you should do this and can, if they agree? They just do it. They just well, do they're it. Ants, they're stupid. They're weak-willed. So he, d- he can buy, he can more or less control. the queen ant. Yeah. Well, he's bigger than that. Yeah. yeah. But he can actually get smaller smaller and ride them. So they can relate to him. Yeah, but but, but then he's super tiny and they're like 50 times his strength. But then they're like horses to people. Like they, you know, like horses are bigger than us, but we still. But they're not in charge. Yeah. Yeah, We're in charge. I don't know. Some horses are definitely in charge. We have a brain.